Hey everyone! Hey, hey everyone! <laughs> this is Doctor. <laughs> this is Doctor Liz, and uh, and hello, Doctor Boulder. How are you doing tonight? I am doing great, Doctor Liz. How are you doing this fine <laughs> evening? I'm doing great. Again, I had another fantastic motorcycle ride today. Uh huh. I'm getting new muffler slip-ons for the bike. And I just can't wait. They're going to sound so much better. My my motorcycle is going to go from sounding like a Dyson vacuum cleaner to actual motorcycle. I can't wait. Like a Harley. Uh, no, Indian... no, like an Indian. No, like an Indian. Yeah. And, okay, all right. An Indian trying to pretend to be a Harley. No, like oh, an Indian. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I just wondered, didn't you own a Harley at one time? Yes, I've had, this is my fifth or sixth motorcycle. I can't remember. I'm I know. Good. So good. I think, I, yeah, I think I when I first met you, you had like a, was it a Diobi or something? No, Ducati, a Ducati Monster. Now, listen, people keep buying these bikes out from under me. They want the Chaplin's motorcycle. I don't know. Oh, God. That's so, it, anyway, so whatever, whatever, but they, uh, they buy it out from under me, then I have to get another one. So. <laughs> but anyway, oh. I, know, I know, Dr. Mulder, you wanted to give some updates. So yes, keep it yes. to us. Bring it. Well, yeah. Well, first off, we're finally catching up here. All these orders that uh, from people uh, with the uh, Justin Perry uh, uh, followers, uh, you know, people who are fans of his uh, of his uh, his uh, show. And anyway, we're, I just want to let everybody know that I'm uh, catching up today. Uh, I think the people who ordered on the 23rd and most of the 24th of April, uh, your machines are going to be going out tomorrow. So that uh, that's really going to cover a lot of uh, ground here. And we're, I mean, I'm, I'm still halfway to, uh, you know, getting you know completely caught up. But I uh, just want to let them know, hey, your patience is paying off. Uh, we've done some new things here. I got this is my latest generation, and I've decided, you know, in honor of uh, of this big, uh, you know, thing that we've done, that uh, Josh and uh, Justin Perry and myself have kind of, I guess, worked together to, uh, you know, to uh, pull off, uh, you know, provide a really nice product for all, you know, all of his fans. Um, we're just, uh, you know, went ahead and, like I said, the very latest uh, technology is going into these machines. So I just want to let them know that, you know, their patience is going to pay off. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be hearing some great uh, feedback here in the next week or two. But, uh, yeah, that, and that's a, that's really something I wanted to bring, you know, bring to everybody's attention. And uh, next thing, too, uh, I've been getting, uh, you know, these questions. You know, people tell me, like, what they want or what they're trying to use the machines for. And I think we discussed, you know, money was, uh, was a, a primary uh, motivation and another thing that people are looking at is like, uh, I got one the other day. Somebody wanted to, they wanted to have a platinum record, and uh, you know, and that kind of made me wonder, what is it that makes a star? What wh what is that quality that makes a star? You know, for example, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to have the greatest singing voice in the world, and they're and they're likely one of the you know the the most famous singers in the world. Uh, for example, Mick Jagger. This guy cannot sing. I mean, I probably sing as well as he does. This guy cannot sing, but he, you know, he has been in the show in show business since the '60s. I mean, this guy has been on the stage for over 60 years, and um, and he's, you know, he's just as good now as he ever was. And he's got the it factor. Or what about uh, David Byrne from the Talking Heads? This guy can't, you know, he really can't sing either. He doesn't have a great voice, but he, you know, the man is awesome. He's a star. He's they're they're both superstars. Uh, I mean, what is that it factor? What what brings that 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 page or that 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 thing on the stage or or to their music or to their art that makes them special and makes them stand out? And I really, you know, that's something that I've always questioned. Have you got any ideas about that yourself? Have you ever thought about that? Oh goodness! Well, yes, I have. I can't say I've come up with amazing answers. I think that. I think it takes a lot of personal confidence and I think it takes following your passion, right? And if you mm -hmm. just get up there every, every day and live your passion and if you get up every day and, you know, obviously some people are musicians and some people are not, but as you said, I mean, you can make a pop star out of anybody, out of a potato. So, um, you just put the potato to a beat, you got a song, you know? So, um, so I think it takes following your passion and, and, and a lot of hard work, actually. Like, I remember I had a little band, a stupid little band back in the day, and we called ourselves a living room band, LRB. Oh, gosh. We knew we sucked, but we just, we loved it. We played and played and played and played and played our little hearts out. And we knew that the Beatles um, played, like, what they say, something like 900 gigs before they ever made it big. I think they played 800, 900 basement bars in England before they made it big. And um, so mm -hmm. you just... 
so we just plugged away at it and you know we still suck <laughs> and mm. we stop but you know but you know we didn't necessarily have the talent you know i had my band members couldn't keep a beat that's a problem right there but so um so but but you know if you want to i can talk about some things on how to move toward having the it factor right yeah perfect Let's and do also it. i will tell you you talked about i have to just say though how to have a platinum record i mean i will tell you honestly this is getting down into deep state shit but how to have a platinum record is to uh become a satanist <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to perfectly sell your soul i mean yeah, i'm no. seriously i'm serious like there is an element of you know the casting couch type of thing there's an element of the um um do you know being bought and sold and and owned by record companies and it gets pretty evil so you do sell your soul so there is that but 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 if you put that aside like you know to kind of say have a platinum record if we just put that aside and say how to have the it factor in whatever it is you want to do Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. i um this is something that i work with my population there's there's this is how i talk about it and i've just figured out recently how to simplify it how to how to uh, live your best life. It sounds kind of goofy. It sounds like a corny, but oh. I would say there's two pathways or two important steps to actually like having a successful life, whether it's having a family and having a beer in your backyard at the end of the day, or being, being a, a, the fam- a famous drummer or mm-hmm. being a famous entrepreneur or having that two houses on the beach or being a developer down in Charleston or, 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 or getting the babes or whatever it is. Whatever mm-hmm. it is, right? Mm-hmm. Having all the other Porsches and all that you want, and it's two two paths, and I make it two paths. And I'll explain. But one is the first step that I talk to my population about is how to be loving with teeth, right? How to be a loving being that's kind and compassionate, and actually is just nice, but with right. teeth. What with teeth? So not, I'm not talking about being um, doormats and being taken advantage of, right? right? So being loving with teeth, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. That's the first path. And I've broken it up into two path and I'll, paths, and I'll explain why. And the other path is, um, oh gosh, for tonight, I'll just call it doing the dark work or doing your shadow work or doing your what I call your inner work or doing, some people call it the great work, or doing uh, your personal work or what I call Doing your, you know, I feel like everyone is responsible for their own growing up, right? Mm-hmm, even me, mm-hmm. even me, I'm still, still at it. So those are two paths. The first one, be loving with teeth. And the second path is doing the personal work. Mm-hmm. Now, now, frankly, if you do the personal work after about five or 10 or 15 years, you'll learn to be nice. So that's a long time. So I mean, <laughs> if you do the work, you can be a turd when you're in your dark night of the soul, doing your dark stuff. You could be a pretty grumpy person. And be pretty, make your family and so forth pretty miserable. So I recommend taking a dual path of learning to be loving with teeth, right? Mm-hmm. And doing the sh- and also doing the shadow work or doing the personal work. Now, I know one of my own life goals, I already kind of came to this planet kind of nice. I was kind of just dumb, nice, like dorky, dumb, nice. Like, I'm just nice. Yeah, Stupidly yeah, nice. Yeah, I Stupidly agree. nice. And, but I got taken advantage, my life, I just got taken advantage of all the time. Um, mostly by, I mean... Yeah, just by people, you know, because if you're a nice person and you're an empath and you're kind, you attract people who are takers. If you're a giver, you attract takers, right? Right, right. If you don't have teeth. And so you end up in, um, I think you, you, you've talked about this too, Brad. We've talked about this before, but when you're a giver, the takers take, you know, so how to do that. So part of my life lesson has been learning to grow teeth. And this is why I talk about this. I had to learn teeth. And what I mean by teeth is boundaries, first of all, just a boundary. So you could be nice. But when you're around an abusive person, you don't have to go back in for more. You don't have to go back in for more pain, right? So what I do with my population is I simply, out of each of these two paths, you know, um, it's not the road less travel. We're going down both paths at the same time. We're just taking a step every day toward Mm -hmm. both these paths. And Mm -hmm. so what I wanted to just provide our audience um, is the next, what I would say is the next good step for each of these two paths. Now, why do we care? So what? Why do we want to even be good? Who cares? Well, a couple things. First of all, most pragmatically is to work with your machines. Um, while I just said to you before we started the show, I think you could go ahead and be a turd and do well with the boxes. It doesn't. Correct. I, you Correct. can. You can. Um, um, there are people who don't grow up or people who are immature and use the boxes. However, I think to get that it factor to move forward, I think the more mature you are, the more the better questions you'll ask. 
the better wishes you'll make, the more better intent, the more maturity, and the more success you'll have. Do you agree? I would agree. I would say that uh, the you know the things I wished for uh, when I first started you know and getting involved in radionics compared to what they are today, they're entirely different. Yeah. I think uh, in the beginning it was me, me, me. Now it's it's me, but everybody else. You know, the good of the good of the whole. You know, for everybody else, I try to help. I'm more giving uh, to other people. I'm more helpful to other people than I used to be. I, I think I was more of a, a selfish, you know, like a, like you say, a turd uh, in the <laughs> beginning. In the beginning, but I think uh, I think as I've gotten more mature with it, with this technology, and I realize, you know, the ramifications that it really does have. In people's lives, I've I've tried to do my best. I think I I think I've matured in a way where I try to be more helpful to other people, and it's not I just don't look at my own. Yeah, you know, I, I try to take care of my own needs first, of course. You know, to, to get you know get through life, but you know I try to be I try to you know think uh, I try to look through the eyes of other people. You know, how do they look at things? You know, what was their past like? Why do they interpret things entirely different, differently than I would do? And I try to, you know, try to be more sympathetic, more, more helpful. And because, you know, I've been there and I, you know, and I know what it's like. And I, and that's the reason why I try to, you know, again, try to be more, I don't know, I would say, I would say kind, uh, kinder to people than I used to be. Okay, and, uh, so, okay, go ahead. You know, well, I, I think that's, I think you're summing it up. I, I think you're right. Is is the the point of what I'm saying here? I think you're right. Okay. Well, so the, now back to the being pragmatic. Have you been getting better effect now using the machines? Yes, I have. Yeah, I, I thought I was pretty good in the in the beginning, but damn, I mean, it's uh, now it's it's light years ahead of where I used to be. You know what? I got this. This reminds me of something I wanted to bring up, and I know you agree with me, um, Dr. Mulder, is that. You know, when we first were learning, we both were learning from Uncle Chucky. And I just want to give him a shout out again. Oh, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, the man's yeah, a genius. The man's a genius. Uh, I learned I, so much from him. I just read those PDFs, but I've read them all like three times each. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of it, uh, you know, I think, you know, you have to you have to understand he has a very unique sense of humor. And, you oh, know, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah. Once you get over that, once you understand a sense of humor, then, you know, then you just realize the brilliance behind what he's writing, and I like the way I like the way uh, Chuck writes. You know, because it's very, you know, it's it's very simple. You know, and what I mean by simple, I mean it's easy to follow. It's easy to understand. He he pretty much lays everything out there. Nothing's cryptic or or in code. He, you know, he just he just lays it all out there and and lets you you know uh, it's. You know, just let you uh, kind of soak it all in. But yeah, I have to agree. If it wasn't for Charles Casamano, um, I would not have uh, built my uh, first machine. Uh, the guy has, you know, I think uh, my relationship with him is probably one of the best relationships I've ever had uh, when it came to like a student uh, teacher or, or, you know, yeah. or master, yeah, student master type uh, scenario. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, my hands off. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and like I said, uh, I really do thank him, you know, infinitely for uh, all the help he's given me and all the insights he's given me uh, over the years. And uh, it's just a, just a heck of a good guy. And I, I wish him well. I truly do. Yeah. And, you know, um, I just learned so much from his idea of thought forms. I created that um, copper stopper over my vehicles like he taught. And I created always safe and thought forms over my vehicles and the motorcycle. I have an mm -hmm. always safe thought form. Oh, yeah. So interesting. And um, again, if I hadn't read his work, I'd still be a turd. So anyway, we just lift our glasses to him and just appreciate his work so yeah, much. Yeah, toast to you, folks you Charles Casamano. Yes. Yeah, and if you folks out there, just go research him and read those PDFs. And, um, you know, some of it with a grain of salt, but a lot of excellent information in those. So, we, But anyway, so that's where Dr. Mulder and I had our start with the boxes. And that's kind of at the same time I was reading that stuff when I met Dr. Mulder and bought my first wishing machine. Mm -hmm. So um, so anyway, if, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to continue with my little spiel here, if that's okay with you. Yes, ma'am. Please continue. <laughs> Please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All right. So, <laughs> so when we talk about loving with teeth, what we're talking about is learning to be nice with proper boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two paths to that. It's almost like a flow chart. Now, I'm going to talk about one, but I'm going to mention the other one. What I mentioned to my population is one way to do it, one way to become loving with teeth 
or loving with proper boundaries is to find a faith, is to find a faith and practice the practice of that faith. Mm -hmm. It's called praxis. The word's praxis. Just have, you know, do the praxis of whatever faith. If you're Muslim, if you're Buddhist, if you're Wiccan, if you're Norse, if you're Christian, find a faith and follow the faith. And that can take you there. Usually, you know, there's certain like radicalized pieces of religions that don't do this. But in general, mm -hmm. most mainline religions and so forth are pretty loving. Okay. Most of the time. They can get judgmental and stuff like that. But in general, if you follow faith, I'm not talking about that right now. That's for, I'm going to take a more secular route. Um, okay. Because I think most of our audience is probably more secular. And, you know, not necessarily going to church of a Sunday and stuff like that. All right. Mm -hmm. So one easy way to become loving with teeth is to look into this age-old book written in the 90s. It's old for me, but is called, it's called, the book is called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And it's called The Four Agreements. He's got something with the fifth agreement out now, but you can actually get on YouTube and hear the book written out, uh, read out loud if you don't want, if people out there aren't readers, or you can listen to it on Audible. You can get a book and read it in the bathroom. But it's a pretty simple book, and there's the four agreements, and they involve things like, being in be, learning to be impeccable with your speech, like understanding that every word out of your mouth is a blessing or a curse. In other words, just like Uncle Chuck, you said, um, anything you say becomes a thought form. And if you say it and believe it enough, it becomes real. So, you know, if you're cursing your kids, my kid's such a dumb ass, blah, 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 blah. You know what? Guess what? You think that kid's dumb and he becomes dumb. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if you, you know, if you, if you bless and use the words coming out of your mouth, judiciously and and not and try not to gossip and try to speak honorably and try we can't always do this but he calls it the first thing is called being impeccable with your speech another one of his agreements is do your best every day all you can do is do your best every day that's all you got sometimes it's a hundred percent day sometimes it's a 72 percent day but if you do your best every day you can go to bed with your head held high knowing you did your best that's all you had Right. And um, one thing I love, which addresses the boundary issues, addresses the teeth part of it, is um, don't assume, ask for clarity. In other words, let's say you and I are talking, Dr. Mulder, and uh, or we're texting. You know, texting, you can't tell stuff over text. And I say something that sounds kind of jerkish, like, like I call you a name over text or something like that. And I'm joking. But you don't know I'm joking. You could simply assume I'm being a jerk and go, wow, she just called me a name. Instead of just asking, hey, did you just call me a name or are we having fun? You know, and, and people all the time just make assumptions about the behavior of their people. And, and they, instead of just saying, hey, what did you mean by that? You know what I mean? It's really, it's really obvious, but hard to do at the same time. So there's four agreements. I've, I've brought up three of them. Um, and one of the other ones is something like, don't worry about other people's behavior. It's not about you. I forget what he exactly calls it. I haven't read the book in a year or so. But um, it's basically anything anybody does in your world has nothing to do with you it's all their own shit right right it's all their own shit now we hear stuff your mom my mom would say something mean to me i've talked to you about this dr Mulder, and i'd be like no she's so mean to me you know it's all her own hurt and pain aimed at me but i'm taking it in and it, letting it upset me but it takes a while but you can begin to realize that anything anyone out there in the world does or says to you or around you has nothing to do with you it has all to do with their own world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they may make you want to feel like it's you but it has nothing to do with you it's their own cage and chains rattling so but so just if you want if someone out there wants to look at the four agreements by don miguel ruiz it's a lovely secular view of how to have a good life and be a good person it's 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 simple it is simple, simple, simple. If you don't want to read, you can get it on Audible or look, listen to it on YouTube, or you can read about it online, and you can read all the four agreements online. They're not hard to understand. What do you think of that? I think that's excellent. Um, I'm telling you, it's. If I think the book was written in the 90s. It is excellent. And I'll add to that, um, If again, that's the secular flavor. So to be loving with teeth, you can either do a, a route where you follow the faith and follow the whatever the teachings of that faith, or you can read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I'll put a link down below to uh, finding that in the description box. Mm -hmm. Also, also, there's the work of two gentlemen called, uh, the last names are Cloud and Townsend. That's Cloud and Townsend. Now, these guys are overtly Christian dudes, but they have a book called Boundaries. It's a book called Boundaries. It is the quintessential book on boundaries. And... And people can actually look it up, look them up on YouTube and hear a lecture 
um, all the boundaries in the chapters of that book. So you don't, you don't even have to buy the book. I know people don't read anymore. I'm the only reader I know. So you can get it on YouTube or get the book. But if you read the boundaries book and read the four agreements, you will be on your way to being a decent person. And um, so I'm going to interrupt that because remember, let's go back. I, there's two paths to living your best life and to having great success with the wishing machines. One is to be loving with teeth, which we, with, um, which we have just been talking about. <coughs> the other one is doing the shadow work or doing your personal work or your inner work. We haven't discussed that one yet. So you can read the four agreements and you can read the book called the book boundaries. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the pragmatic reason to do this is to have successful machines. But the, the bigger reason to do this work is folks, our listeners, our lovely listeners whom we love so much. and We wish you so well. We wish you the best lives ever. Um, we're coming to a time on the planet or whether you, know, you will come to a time in your lives that if a you don't become nice or a decent person and you don't do your personal work, your life is going to contract and compact, and you're just going to, your life will come crashing to a halt. In other words, you will not have the family and the relationships that you want or the finances that you want, because if you can't figure this out, where your life is going, you can't always take your emotional baggage with you. You need to do the dump of all the dark, shadowy stuff, which we're going to talk about in a second. So you need to do the dump or your life will come crashing to a halt. Life begins to talk to you when you're having a problem in life in a whisper. In fact, C.S. Lewis talks about this in Mere Christianity, but this doesn't have to be Christian. Your life begins to whisper to you like, hey, there's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then life gets louder and louder and louder if you don't listen. Like first your wife may say, hey, babe, blah, 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 I'm unhappy. And you're like, ah, oh, shut up, bitch. You know, like uh -huh. after years and years and years, she'll be bouncing up and down the bed, bawling you out and leaving your ass. So I'm just saying, like, if you don't listen to life when it's a whisper, it will get louder and louder. It will come crashing to a halt. So I recommend instead of waiting till then to fix your life, it's like it's like getting healthy after a heart attack. You know, you can actually live a healthier lifestyle and not have the heart attack or you can have the heart attack and change your life then. But it's just it's that's worse. It's just not so good. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about in terms of emotional, spiritual resiliency. It's better to learn to become loving with teeth and to do your dark or your personal work. So let's now just talk about that second path, the shadow work. I'll call it the shadow work for now, for the time being. That is the stuff, Dr. Mulder, like we all have dark, dirty, nasties inside of us that we don't want people to know about. The embarrassing things we don't like, the porn uh, whatever it is we're doing, it might be uh, we're subscribing to some sexy webcam. It might be. Um, Tell the, us more about your personal no, life. Oh, stop! <laughs> um, it could be. Um, it could be the the sex doll that you bought that you're hiding from your wife. It could be, <laughs> no, it could be the it could be the avoidance behavior of that shady business about the money. It could be the taxes. It could be the bills you don't want to pay. It could be um, the mistresses that someone has, or the or the cabana boys someone has. It could be. Stealing, lying, thieving. It could, it, we all have stuff. I mean, I have stuff. Stuff that we don't want anybody to know about. Now, mm -hmm. if we keep shoving that down, it's going to come bursting out in inappropriate ways, right? So I'm just suggesting if you every day begin to do a teeny bit of shadow work with yourself, just a teeny bit. Another analogy I use in talking about it is um, we all have a toy box of pain, right? And mm -hmm. our, our addictions, our bad behaviors, our pains, our traumas, they're all in this box of pain, like a toy box size. I don't know even what that size is, like underneath, like a coffee table size. <laughs> you can take one little thing out each day and just look at one little bit of pain, one little teeny thing. If you dump it all out, you'd lose your mind. But you can just begin to dump that out and you could do it privately. I'm not saying you have to tell the world your embarrassing things, but begin to work on it. Begin to work on it. Teensy -beensy. And so here's an, e here's an interesting way. And I bring this up because people may not have heard of this way. So again, we're on the second branch. The first one is being loving with teeth, and we talked about that. The second one is to do your shadow work because you can't take your crap with you where you're going. You can't. So one really is easy and interesting way to do it is looking into something called The Work by Byron Katie, and I'll put this in the description below too. Her work, what she calls it, The Work, two different words, The Work. Her name is Byron Katie. It's B-Y-R-O-N. Then the second name is Katie, K-A-T-I-E. Now, there's a book. She has a book called Loving What Is. Um, you can read a book. Again, people don't read. You can find her on YouTube, all kinds of watching her do, all kinds of sessions where she's doing 
the work with people and helping mm-hmm. them feel better about their stuff. You can also get the work app on Android or uh, Apple. Um, you can get an app on your phone, which will help you. Or you can just go to the, go to the website, thework.com, all one word, thework.com, and download a PDF worksheet. And uh, she has a whole thing she teaches called uh, Judge Your Neighbor, Write It Down, Ask Four Questions, and Turn It Around. And this is where you're like, you know, this is where you take all the things you're angry or upset about. Like, well, she did this, and he did that, and she never does this, and blah, 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 and I hate the world, the world's out to get me. You judge your neighbor. And then you write it down and then, you, and then she has you ask four questions about that judgment, about that thought you're having. And usually by the end of that work, you begin to realize, you begin to see it from a different perspective. And it just changes your perspective on the, what you, begin, you saw as a crappy situation. So, um, and that is an easy and pretty much free way, if you do a little research, a free way to begin to do that shadow work. Yeah. I got through my divorce doing that. Like, I, that guy is this and this and he's this and that and blah, 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 blah. You know, divorces are not nice, you know. They're not nice. And so, in general, and um, all the things I saw were so evil and horrible, I was able to just shift the perspective. Not that the guy gets away with it or the gal gets away with it. And not that they're not in the wrong, necessarily. It's just that it changes my perspective so I feel better about the situation so I can drive on. And move on with my life and leave the baggage behind. Does that make sense? Makes sense. It doesn't necessarily mean that what the person did was right or that they get away with it or that they get forgiven necessarily right away. It's just that it's a process to change your perspective. So those are just two straightforward things if someone just wants to start doing their work. Now, our listeners may have already been doing a lot of their inner personal work. It's fine. I mean, some of our listeners may be coming from a science background where like, look, just give me the machine. I'm going to set it and let's get it done. And that's great. So that's why I wanted to offer some, if no one's ever, ever looked inside, inside themselves, I wanted to offer two easy approaches. Okay. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz and The Work by Byron Katie. So, so for example, Brad, come up with something that might make you mad. Something like, you know, uh, how about the person who rear-ended you in the vehicle, right? Um, I wasn't really mad at him. I, I kind of okay. felt sorry for him because he was okay. crying. I oh. was like, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of like, you know, okay. I, I just kind of, well, you know, it, okay. it's a thing. You know, it's okay. a thing. How about, how about someone else out there in the world that's made you mad or sad or, you know, upset? Oh, yeah. I, I got somebody in mind. Okay. Well, you can just, we don't, well, because you say like, let's say someone said something to you that's mean, right? Mm-hmm. You can say, I'm really mad at that person because they said something mean to me. Mm-hmm. And the first question, for, if you're doing the work by Byron Katie, the first question is, is that person really mean? And you go, yes, that person <laughs> mean, you know? uh, but then they say, are they, are they always mean? You're like, well, no, they're not. she's not always mean. <laughs> not always. There were some good times. Right. Um, and then have there been times that you've been mean? Like, well, yeah. Like, and then you be, then she asks you to change the pronouns around. Like, I'm mad at so and so because he was mean to me. And you go, well, I'm mad at so and so because I was mean to them. So you just change it all around. Again, mm-hmm. it's judge your neighbor, write it down, ask for questions, and turn it around. And what you do is you begin to realize that you begin to realize that you do that stuff too sometimes, right? And they're not the only bad person. Sometimes you do some bad stuff. And sometimes you've hurt that person, maybe. And then you begin to realize that actually, like we've talked about, I mean, I don't know if our viewers agree with this, but there is a a way of thinking that everything in our outside world is a mirror back to us. The world is a mirror. So everything you see out there in the world is a reflection back to what you are. So the extent, Dr. Mulder, that you see beauty in the world, a beautiful woman, beautiful sunsets, that is you actually reflecting on your own soul's beauty. Now, I mean, maybe it's this wild stretch for some, but um, and the, the, to the extent that you see evil and darkness in the world, it's because you're seeing your own shadow self. Guess what? You're seeing your own shadow self, but your subconscious, your conscious mind, rather, can't handle the fact that you have a bad side. So they deflect it or project it out onto the world, right? So you begin to realize if you do this work enough that, oh, the shitty person is me. <laughs> you know, um, but but you realize that. Um, you begin to realize when you work on your own shadow self, they become more loving because again, that's the other branch, the other path, but mm-hmm. you become more loving because you realize if you love yourself, you just have love to bring out into the world. Now, a lot of us aren't there yet. We're like, rah, 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 the world sucks. I get it. <laughs> yeah. But as you can 
begin to do this work with Byron Katie, you at least the least you can chill about the other person and you open your perspective and you feel better. And instead of being all frustrated, angry, mad, because that stress can make you sick and frustrated and tired and you don't get your goals met, you don't set good intentions, you don't make good decisions, that you can um, move through the world more calmly and happily. And, and more like a Buddha or a Bodhisattva or a Lao Tzu or a Confucius or a Jesus, you know, um, so, or maybe an, a Muhammad, maybe for some, so blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you move through the world more calmly and you could make better decisions and questions and intentions and you could use the machines better too. So those are the two offerings I want to make. And in the future, we can go down these paths again and I can offer more helps down each of those two paths, right? I mean, mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's helpful for people, but I just tell you, if you begin to be loving with teeth, not a doormat, but be loving with teeth and do your inner work, your shadow work, your great work, you will have a, a great, abundant, successful life and you'll have more fun with the machines and it'll be more successful for you. Yeah. And I, I think you're right. Cause for example, I had this one difficult person. I, I you know, I've talked about uh, many times yeah. and uh, you know, in hindsight uh, now I, I, I get along with them better than I ever have now. And uh, uh, also, I kind of understand why this person was the way, you know, they were. And uh, and once I kind of understood that, you know, I was able to... Oh, mm -hmm. I was able to... I had an entirely different attitude about the situation. Yeah, well, I tease this person from time to time, you know, about some of the crazy things they did. Why, of course... You know, it's just being human. It's just, oh, you're you know, talking about me. Oh, no, no, no. I'm no, just no. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no. But uh, no. And uh, but now, I, you know, if anything, I want this person to uh, to succeed. And I want I want them to be the best they possibly can be. <laughs> I really do. I really truly mean that. I don't really want to be there to to share that experience with them. But <laughs> I uh, but I, I want them to be the best person they can possibly be. And I remember there were times when I actually wanted to just put my hands around this person's throat and just, you know, just, you know, try to shake some sense into them. And uh, and I just realized that, hey, I wasn't the person to do that job. They had to, you know, they had to do their own, like like you said before, they had to do their own work. They had to do their own personal work. And I wasn't, uh, I wasn't there to do it. Uh, you know, I wasn't capable of doing it and I wasn't qualified to help them, in, in, you know, with, with what they needed. But... Uh, but in hindsight, yeah, it, it made me grow. I, I was able to understand why people, you know, hey, I'm not a perfect person either. You know, I, maybe I could have been more patient with this person, more understanding. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, again, it was something that I really needed to reflect on and think about. And now uh, I have no animosity whatsoever, nothing. Uh, I, you know, if anything, I want, I want the best for them. And I don't know. I don't know if that's a sign of maturity or just a sign of, uh, you know, uh, or what that is or, you know, because I would like for them to feel the same way about me. You know, you bring up a good point, which is and that's boundaries. You can't make anybody do this work. Everybody has to do their own. And it's hard sometimes. It's a pain and it makes you cry. It makes you mad and frustrated. Like you cannot just take a pill and you can't just drink a beer and you can't just do one workout or do a yoga session. It's every day or most days of the week that, mm -hmm. that one needs to be about doing this. Number one, becoming a nice, kind person. And number two, doing the shadow work. Um, and there's lots of ways to do shadow work. There's a thousand ways. I just brought up this one here because maybe our listeners haven't heard of this one. I'll be mm -hmm. bringing up more. But if you, I tell you folks, if you go down this path, you will have just a much better life. And um, as your life moves forward, it won't come to a crashing halt because, you know, there's some karmic burn later in life. I made that up. I don't know if you have know, a karmic burn because of all the stuff you've done to other people or, you know, or, or done to yourself and been unforgiving with your own self. Mm -hmm. So, but, but you have to get up and do this yourself. And people don't, people will just self-medicate and ignore it. For years and years and years and years and years and they're hoarders or they're drinkers or they're you know they have all these instead of again this is a whole other concept i'll talk about sometime but instead of self-soothing which i recommend they self-medicate in other mm -hmm. words instead of having a beer at night blah 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 on the nice patio in the sunshine at the end of a work day they're having two six packs you know and that's just not good for anybody long term right 
Right. Um, um, or instead of a glass of wine, a woman comes home at the end of a day, and I'm just, you know, women drink wine in general. I'm generalizing right now. And they, they drink the whole bottle of wine and, or, or the whole half gallon of ice cream, not just a scoop. So it's just, you know, or it's the working out for 10 hours a day instead of one hour. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. good things that we do can be overdone as well. Or it's instead of having a, a mated partnership and having great lovemaking, we're out there having sex with anything that'll move, you know. So it's like, it's just, you know, there are things that are more healthy and things that are better for us than others. And so I recommend that if you've got these addictions, again, work on those if you can or able. And there's a thousand ways and we can talk about them sometime. But work on the addictions and try to move toward. I recommend people make a list of self-soothing items. What do you do to self-soothe? For me, I'm boring. Well, maybe a motorcycle ride with a friend or something. Um, it's a cup of tea. It's a out, you know, a, an adult beverage outside with a clove cigarette, maybe you know, on the patio. Sometimes it's hanging with friends, hanging with a girlfriend. I'm gonna go watch a show with my girlfriend, my housemate downstairs. After I'm done here, we're gonna watch our favorite show downstairs. You know, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. um, the self-soothing list, and we get yourself one of those, whatever it is, a walk with the dog, and do that as often as possible. And then do the self-medicating when you can't help it. You know, after the terrible breakup, you know, you got a, a female will have the wine and the ice cream and watch rom-coms, you know, for a month. <laughs> I don't know what you got, you fellas do, but, you know, stuff like that. Sometimes we do self-medicate, but, you know, long term's not so great. Anyway, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things we could talk about. But I think, folks, if you begin to do some of this stuff, you'll be, you will have much better success with machines. Um, yeah, and again, it all goes back to the operator. It all goes back to the operator. Yes. Yeah, so uh, like- you know, yeah, some people, they have a lot of uh, baggage or whatever, and they kind of bring it to the table. But, you know, uh, I guess it depends on how focused you are when you're actually sitting down with the, with the machine and you're tuning it. And I think a lot of it has to do with that. Uh, you know, I don't, you know, I try not to be vindictive with anybody or anything like that. If anything... If if somebody's trying to uh, attack me, I, I try to be on the defense. I don't really try to be on the offense. And I, the first thing I'm thinking is, what the hell did I do to this person? You know, and then you know, and I try to th- figure that out. And I think, well, you know, there's really nothing I can do uh, to change their mind. Uh, you know, they're just, that's just the way they are. So the only thing I can do is just basically be on the on the defense, and uh, and hopefully that you know the storm will pass and they'll they'll divert their attention to somebody else or something else. But, uh, you know, again, I don't know. It, it, it really, you have to do your own. It, it depends on your own attitude on what, you know, when you use the machines, it depends on your clarity, your focus. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, when it comes to getting a good results for, you know, uh, from the machines. But then again, you know, the machines are just an extension of you, you know, garbage in garbage out. Oh, there um, you go. Yeah, and exactly. And so uh, I agree. Uh, but, you know, I try to be kind of as pragmatic about things as possible. I try to be as, you know, I try to take my emotion out of things as much as possible. I just, I sit, there's a goal that I want to accomplish. And uh, and I just, just set the machine to accomplish that goal. Uh, but I will say the side effects of it, you, you do uh, create a sense of empowerment and empowerment you you do seem to get your power back and uh and once you get that you know uh you know it also comes with confidence and then once you get your confidence back uh then you you know i think that's where compassion kind of comes in because you know you kind of realize well nobody can hurt me now i can do pretty much whatever i want to am i going to abuse this power or am i going to use this for the you know for the greater good oh you know Oh, Go sorry ahead. to interrupt you, friend. I was just going to say, you know what? It comes full circle. What you've just showed me is that use of the boxes can help you grow, too. That's what I'm hearing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it worked for me. It worked for me. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, there's, yeah, uh, to this day, yeah, are there things about my life I could I could change no. that I like to be better? Now, well, of course, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, and it, like when we started this thing, you know, before it was, it was the it factor, you know, becoming famous and all, all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, you know, I was told, and I really don't believe this, but I was told that I had somewhat of a, a cult following, you know, and I'm sure it's not a very big cult, but, and my philosophy was, three people, I do not, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, exactly. There you go. Three people. 
you know, my 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 goal was I don't want to be a damn cult leader. I want I want to I want you to be your own cult leader. You know, I want you to be your have your own power, lead your own self. Don't 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 follow somebody else. Follow yourself. So, folks, I have a funny story. I was uh, sometimes Dr. Mulder has asked me to. Uh, Sometimes Dr. Mulder doesn't like to do things out in public, you know, because just because you're paranoid <clears throat> doesn't mean they're not out to get you, right? Right. So I've gone with him, attended some things with him to kind of be his wing woman, you know. If he finds a chick he likes, I back off. But in general, <laughs> I'm just oh, there. I'm, I just kind of, I'm there to kind of chase everybody away. Like, get away from him, I'll shoot you. But anyway, <laughs> so, so, um, um, uh, Dr. Mulder, you went to your hotel room to wash up or something like that, and you're about to give a brief, um, give a talk. And so I'm waiting, waiting for you to show up, and I'm just a nobody there at the back. And I hear these women in the back, they're going, oh, my gosh, hi, your name's Liz, hi, my name's Nancy, I'm Susie. Yeah, oh, my gosh, we hear Dr. Mulder's going to be here. I'm like, oh, really? And and they're like, yeah, we hear, I hope if he's here, I get a chance to talk to him. I said, you know, I heard he's going to be here, too. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I like Dr. Mulder, but, man, he pulls his pants up like the rest of us. Good Lord. Yeah. And, 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 so, and so I go, well, you know what? I bet um, if he shows up, we'll make it, we'll figure out how he can make sure he answers your questions. Like, oh, my God, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And I'm like, Brad, you are talking to that one and that one. You're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, it's just better right. to do what i tell you <laughs> yeah yeah don't argue with don't argue with dr liz i've already learned my lesson you do not argue right, right. so just talk to her talk to her and they're like oh my gosh can we sit next to him like yes you absolutely can sit next to him he's, Why, looking, of like, course. he's looking at me like lord what have you done to me and these two little women are like peppering me with questions but anyway you do have a cult following i <laughs> uh, you know it's funny yeah and i agree uh, you know and i assure you it has not oh, gone to my god, head gonna be here is he gonna be here? Oh God! I you know, is. I'm, I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just little old Brad. I mean, there's nothing, you know. Um, and again, and and I'm not trying to be braggadocious, and I'm not trying to be egotistical. But, but I was told that I was among the best in the world in the world of what I do, and I'm just thinking, okay, well, if I'm the, among the best in the world at what I do, what did I do in order to get to become the best in the world? what was the process and uh and i basically was just working my ass off that was what, yes. that's all it yeah. was yeah you know i can tell you folks um that like this is an example of the it factor i, I we actually brad and i weren't planning to do this this way but this is what has turned out and this is good because actually brad has done the it factor because he had a passion he he sat down and figured it out like uncle chucky has written these pdfs with the plans to build a wishing machine, we call them psionic boxes, or whatever you call them, right? Mm -hmm. And um, but how many people out there actually put one together? You know, at, even at a cardboard box and tinfoil, nobody. Probably three people, and you were one of them. You actually sat down, did it. You found the parts. You found inexpensive sources for in bulk. You did this. You did this. You did this. You found the best source of this and the best source of that, and you worked your freaking ass off. I mean, you were like Thomas Edison with mm -hmm. a dang light bulb. Like, well, um, you didn't take ten thousand times or more. And I don't think you were the ass that Edison actually was in truth, but, um, no, thank you. no, no, no. But I mean, um, so you have, so another one, number one, what did I say to begin with? Live your passion. What is your passion? Go freaking do it. Do it all day long. You know, who is that guy who wrote that book? I can't think of his name, right? Malcolm Gladwell. Is it him? He talks about being a master doing 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. You've put your 10 to 20 to 40,000 hours into this, right? Like I've Easy. done with my own, with my own work yeah. and my own expertise and, you did it, but it's not just a matter of, um, you know, however much talent you had. You did have a genius brain. You've done some patents. You've put things together before. You were not new to this kind of stuff and having a workshop. But, A, you read it, you did it, you studied, and you worked your ass off, and you still are. Yeah. I mean, hell, I was up till 3 o'clock this morning building machines. Yeah. That's what I, mean, I was you doing. You just set a box and go, I want to be a singer. Are you taking the vocal lessons? Are you singing? Are you getting in front of people? Are you going to karaoke night? Or, you know, at the very least, are you, are you competing? Are you going to open the mic nights? Are you singing in concerts? Are you trying to get in front of people? Are you recording yourself? Do you have a studio? Are you, you know, people who do well, folks out there, unless they're offered a, a record deal because they're sleeping with somebody or because they've sold their soul to the devil. Yeah, I was um, going to say that. <laughs> um, you know, if, if those things do happen. But other than that, are you working 10 to 12 to 14 to 15 hours a day on your passion? That's yeah. how you become successful. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it basically is just working your ass off. Like, and what is it? What is it, folks? What is it that you can't wait to do when you have free time? Like, for me, it's the metaphysical stuff. It's metaphysical research. It's the divine. It's the sacred. It's helping people feel better. The stuff I was talking about tonight, I eat, breathe. I, I live. So I do work and I pay the bills so I can study this stuff. I can't not do it. I love it. I love it. I love helping people. Heal. I call myself um, a practitioner of feeling better. I'm a practitioner of feeling better. And, and uh, I, can't, I spend four to six hours a day studying, reading, poking around this stuff. I mean, because I work. I work doing other stuff, which is also involves this work. So, hey, let's say I work eight to ten hour days, 10, 15. So, yeah, I'm doing this stuff for 16 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Like this weekend, yeah, I would have loved to have gone out and played golf. Oh, uh, golf is my passion. That is, that's the thing you, know, you were talking about earlier. Find your the thing that that brings you joy. You know, that, or whatever. Golf is my that's my thing. You know, the, you know what I did this weekend? I built mach- I built parts and machines. That's what I did this weekend. I probably spent uh, almost uh, it was forty eight hours. I probably spent at least thirty of those hours in radionics building machines. Yeah, and every every machine you build, I think it's more and more powerful because of the handler, because of the practitioner, because of what you're putting into them. Well, and thank I, you. I, and I do think actually, I think I've told you this before. Again, this is this talk's getting kind of random, but here we are. Is I think that uh, you're putting out. That's why I call it Mulder's brain because your boxes are like an extension of you, and it's like this brain out there, and I think they're all talking. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, you know, and matter of fact. Uh, Nick uh, Atchison, the guy, and we're going to try to have him on on Wednesday again. And good, this good. time, we're not going to talk about language. We're going to try to talk about quantum, quantum computing, quantum computers, and no, radionics. No, yes. masturbatory, no more masturbatory noodling. No. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's great, Nick. You can speak all, you know, like more than 10 languages. It's really fantastic. I, God bless you. So what's the so what factor? Why do we care? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can get Google to do that for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you so very much. But no, uh, what we're gonna, but what we're gonna do, uh, we will talk about that stuff. But yeah, that's what I, that's what I do. I mean, you know, and I, and another thing too, I found out is, and maybe this is kind of off the topic. I don't know, but I try to surround myself with some of the best people I can find. Uh huh. Uh huh. Doctor Liz. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, doctor. Exactly. You, you are a part of my brain trust, <laughs> and, and, and you've been part of my brain trust for what over five years? Five years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's incredible, you know. And, and even Josh, he's part of my brain trust. The trust, uh, Nick, he's part of my brain trust. I have another guy. His name's Mike. The guy's a freaking genius. Uh, he's a, you know, he, he's another member. And, and I now wingman, him. wingman, and wingman, and, and Shelly, and, and exactly, Peterson. exactly. I mean, I surround myself with people who are the best of what they do. Right. And and, and you know, and I'll be honest with you. I I think uh, all these people have more talent than I do. I really do. I, I, I'm being totally sincere. I think, I, including yourself, Liz, I think all of you have more talent than I do. But the, but the thing about it is that I, you know, I try to surround myself with you people because I hope some of it will rub off on me. And I was told uh, by what I consider a very wise man, he said, in order to become smarter, the easiest way is to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. No, and that's another way to get to the it factor. Yep, exactly. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, and again, you know, I think the difference between, you know, it kind of goes back to the, the early example, Mick Jagger. What made him so world famous? I mean, his, his body. Well, give me a break. Uh, <laughs> Ew, yeah. I mean, OK, this guy, this guy, you know, came from, uh, you know, the poor section of some little British town, uh, you know, with a ragtag band and. uh and the body of work they put out. I mean, if you see the amount of uh, music they put out over the years compared to the Beatles, the Beatles maybe one tenth of the work that the that the, the Rolling Stones have put out. But but Mick Jagger really cannot sing. This guy sucks. I mean, he I, I he, he does not know how to. I mean, I guess he knows how to sing. But but what is it about him that made him so famous? I guess it's the way he was able to get on the stage and command the stage. You know, he has that. It, you know, he has that magnetism, that charisma. And for whatever it is uh, that people just they can't turn their heads they have to watch it and i mean what where does that come from where does that charisma come from where does that like we said before the it where does that come from and i think it's basically what it is he's he's willing to go out there on the stage and, and show part of his soul 
and it goes for the rest of this band. They're the, you, you, it's, you know, anybody can play the notes. Anybody can beat a drum, you know, but they have, they're able to put part of their soul out there for you to see it. That's, that's that human thing. You know, anybody, you know, there's, there's plenty of great painters out there, but what separates them from the Rembrandts and, you know, and the, uh, and the uh, Salvador Dali's and that kind of a thing, or, or what have you, what separates them from the rest of these others? Where right, and, you, and you've got you've got a Mulder's brain all out there. So, folks, if you want part of Mulder's brain, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> but I'm making I'm teasing. No, but basically, your soul no is back in. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm scared about Mulder's brain. Probably scary to be inside your brain. But anyway, uh, no, no, my head's fairly is fairly calm. But uh, uh, but but yeah. So so. But I do think that your soul's in your boxes as well, and so well, I think you. we should be uh, finishing up. It's probably boring folks at this point. But. Well, you know, again, it's all about you know what 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 separates the the average from the you know from the best, and I right. I hope we give them some some helpful hints or what have you. And I appreciate what you've been able to do here tonight, uh, Doctor Liz, and kind of giving people uh, uh you know places to go to and resources where they can actually you know better you know look into things and better themselves and. Like I said, I've definitely uh, was able to better myself with some of the things that you've, you know, you've thrown my way. So there you go. Yeah. So you anyway. guys can just email me um, at intuitive consulting at uh, protonmail.com down below if you want to ask more about this stuff or more sources. I'm happy to help. Oh, great. All right. Well, on that note, uh, oh, yeah. I need to, uh, next time we get on the air, I need to give people a helpful hint or a pointer on how to make their own sigils. Uh, I, I was meaning right, to right. Yes, yes. All right. Anyway, on that note, I'll talk to you later. All Bye -bye. right. Take care. Good night, everyone. We love you.